Uh, it's uh, Cody here with episode two of my uh, year-long beekeeping video project. I am taking advantage of the winter to uh, build some more hives. This is a uh, my own style hive here. Something that I thought up and I'm trying out this year. Uh, see here, the lid I can lift up and it hinges so I don't have to lift it off. I got it filled with uh, frames. These are just some old frames I had uh, in the attic. I uh, still need to clean them up a little bit, but this hive holds 34 frames laid out in the top bar style, but they're the uh, standard frames. I thought it was a good idea. Well, we'll see how that goes this next year. See on the other side here, just got the lid prop. I think I'll have the entrance either here, along this side, or over here. Haven't quite decided yet. <laughs> I'm going to build one more of these, and uh, throughout this video, I'll probably put in clips of me building it. You see, uh, this is a standard bee box for the, the hives that you may recognize. And I built this hive so that it was three of these laid out flat instead of on top of each other. Since the top bar hives work so well, I thought I might combine the two styles. All right, I've got enough wood that I should be able to build one more. I, I may need to go to the store for hinges, but yeah, well, see it locks. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, here's some more frames that I had. They're, they're pretty old, but I can clean them up. There's a piece of uh, uh, comb. This is very old brood comb here. Uh, I think this is actually 20 years old. The bees haven't used it for that long, but it's almost, it's almost all paper from the cocoons that the baby bees make when they're developing. It's almost all the wax has been replaced with paper. It's very strong, much stronger than the original stuff, but it's still, you know, I can still crush it. It's, it's almost, this actually looks a lot like uh, the, uh, the wasp's nest, just from the paper, but it's like it's got wax coated into it. Anyway. Perhaps later on I'll show you the progression of uh, different types of honeycomb. But, let's get building. I'm about ready to make the first cut. This 8 foot board is uh, going to be cut right in half to make the sides. See I'm using this very thick wood, inch and a half lumber. Uh, the thicker wood I found is a little better. The bees seem to like it. Uh, this is 12 inches high, or well, 11 inches high. That'll be the height of it. Alright, so let's cut this. Alright, got these cut. <clears throat> now for the end pieces, I'm going to make them uh, 20 inches long out of the same material. On this hive I made them 21 inches, or 21 and a half inches. On uh, this hive I'm going to make them slightly smaller so that the frames fit better. Uh, did I say 20? I meant 21. So it'll be a 21 inch wide hive. Where would I put that square? I'm using an anvil to hold down the board so it doesn't move when I cut it.
<laughs> Almost lost the camera. There's one. See here, half an inch smaller. The reason I'm doing that, as you can see here, I had to put these uh, metal L brackets in so that the frames didn't fall through. It was just a little bit too, too big. The frames would fit, but if they went all to one side, then it would fall. You know, I kind of like the uh, metal L brackets, but they cost as much as the wood for the entire hive. So for this next one, I'm going to avoid those. Now that I got the table saw cleared off, I'm going to use it to cut a notch out of the wood, just like that. Half an inch in, an inch up, and that'll uh, be the frame rest. Quick test with a piece of scrap wood to make sure I've got the right dimensions. And I do. So now, let's go ahead and run the board across there. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to put the camera down for this. What's wrong with that? Gotta love a table saw. Alright, I'm gonna skip to where I've got it all cut. Alright, it's not perfect, but I can trim that up with a knife. And, uh, I did manage to find my safety glasses uh, before my uh, high school shop teacher yells at me. <laughs> I misplaced them there for a while. But I had them for most of my cuts here. So I got this. I got this other one here. And uh, now I'm going to start screwing it together. Gotta drill the holes for the screws so the top part of the screw here is not grinding into the wood because the deal is that you're you're screwing one board to the other board you're not trying to screw the whole thing together like you would with nails this top one is being pulled held down against the other board by the screw anyway <laughs> all right so now I got it all screwed together. It's starting to look like a box. Here's one of the frames. Slides along just fine. It's a perfect fit. For the bottom, I just cut a set of wooden pl planks. A cedar, out of cedar wood. I'm just gonna screw them together, kinda like that. Put another row of these along there. And I'll screw them down in a way that the, uh, you know, just have a few screws along the corners. That way I can unscrew, screw it with a screwdriver if I have to, and take it off to clean the hive. Uh, I'll probably never have to do that, but anyway. Now that I cut the uh, size of the hive down, the boards don't quite match up, so I'm gonna have to trim that. No, I'll go ahead and do that now.
All right, now they line up. All right, got those all screwed on. Let's flip this over. Then I just gotta go in here and sand off all these uh, little nibs from where the screws poke through. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I prefer not to think of it as a coffin. <laughs> it does kind of look like a coffin. Nice cedar cedar bottom there. Pine sides. All right, it's coming together. All right, now this is all together. It's time to start working on the lid. I have here a two by four frame. It's cut at a five degree angle. Covered in tin. There's an air space inside of there. And then sided with more cedar planks. I've already got uh, this piece here cut. So I just cut both of them at the same time. Now I'm just going to make these with the 5 degree angle and screw it together. Alright, so I've got the angles drawn. I'm going to cut them out with the uh, table saw because I don't think I'm skilled enough to do it with the skill saw. Even with the table saw it'll be a bit tricky, but I've done it once before. So I'll come back when I got that. All right, there they are. Uh, again, not perfect, but this part's gonna be going across the tin, so it doesn't really matter. What really does matter is that the links here line up. And they, they actually don't. Okay, uh, that's what the wood rasp is for. See, I'm just going to take that, grind it down until it, they all line up and they're exactly the same length. I'll show you why that uh, they need to line up. If they don't line up, you end up with things like this. It doesn't, uh, the corners don't match. So I need to make sure that's all nice and square. See here, as I was cutting this board, because I didn't have a place to cut it with, the, the way the board wants to come down and pinch the blade, this will cause the saw to jump. So to avoid that, I stopped early, you see here, I stopped early before that happened, and I'm just going to cut this with the hacksaw and straighten it up with the rasp. Much safer, and the wood will end up looking better. Okay, got this trimmed up with the rasp. You can't even tell that I stopped the saw halfway through. Or, well, you can't even tell that I stopped the saw before I got all the way through. I find that the top of the other hive is a good place to set up the frame for the lid. That's how it goes together. And just screw it together. Alright, got the lid frame done. Now I'm going to flip it over and nail on the cedar planks. There we go. See, now I got this all, all nailed together 
and trimmed up. Now all the lid needs is some tin. And uh might gonna throw some fiberglass in here. I'm gonna nail cut some tin and nail it on. Here's the tin. Just some uh, ye oldie scrap tin that used to be the siding to a chicken coop. That I'm uh, able to use for this project. Just gotta cut it. So now I've got the tin cut. You see here. I've also filled the inside with some fiberglass. This uh, fiberglass is formaldehyde treated, but I figure the bees aren't going to come in contact with it. And I've seen bees inside of walls anyway, and they don't seem to mind the fiberglass. Yeah. Honeybees seem to thrive inside of people's walls that are stuffed with fiberglass. So, <laughs> I don't think that's going to hurt them at all. <laughs> I'm just going to nail this tin on and uh, that'll be pretty much done for the lid besides the, the lock and the hinges. <laughs> While else fails, it makes a pretty good toolbox. But anyway, I've got the tin nailed on now. And, uh, now all I need is the hinges to hook it onto the board or box. Unfortunately I don't have any hinges on the moment so I'm gonna have to go to the store. I'm also out of screws. But uh, yeah I'm gonna have to go to town to get those and that'll be a little while before I can go into town. And I've, I've got to go back to school anyway so I'll have to go to town and then come back next weekend. But yeah, you get the idea. I'll have the legs knit, legs put on. And uh, we'll end up looking like this, of course. <clears throat> 34 frame beehive. Uh, essentially like uh, two, two deep bodies and a super. I'm think what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put a uh, down in here. I'm gonna put like a box or a piece of styrofoam or something to raise it up, and then have the shallow super frames, and then just have a honey super at one side of the box here. <laughs> It'll be exactly the same as a three-story high regular box style hive, except on a, on the side. Like a top bar hive is set up. I find that the bees like it better that way. And uh, see how this works. <laughs> Over the course of this last video, you may have wondered what the background noise was of the lump, 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 lump uh, sound. Well, here at Sabre Ranch, we are not hooked up to any electrical grid, so we have to produce our own power. And this here is a diesel engine, which has been running this whole, t which uh, runs between three and 12 hours a day, depending on how much electricity we're using. We have a couple more generators over here uh, as backups and in case we need to use more power. Got a bee box sitting here, an old one. Uh, I got those all over the place. But yeah, this uh, little engine works pretty good. Turns a turns a little generator here. Uh, I'm gonna actually start it back up. You can see how I start it. <laughs> well, not much you can see. <laughs> a little bit of ether. You hear the fuel rack?
There it goes. <laughs> we got power. All right, so that explains that. Uh, this is going to be the end of the second episode. Mm -hmm.